In this tutorial, we're gonna work with vector objects to create explainer video type content. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So this is gonna be an extremely helpful video if you're working with explainer videos or if you need to put together some nice motion graphics to display some type of information. So specifically in this video, we're gonna take a look at adding vector objects to our composition so we can display whatever information we need to. So here we are inside of After Effects and we're gonna be able to add these vector illustration icons to create our explainer video. So whatever icons that you need for your video, you're gonna be able to search that up. So let's talk about these vector icons real quick. So these icons like the cell phone, the laptop, and the tablet here, and even uh, this bubble up here are vector icons, meaning that they really weren't created in After Effects, they were created in Adobe Illustrator. I'm not gonna be designing any of these from scratch. I have a few tutorials on designing this stuff in Illustrator and also there's plenty out there. But I wanna talk about how you can save a lot of time using free assets. So this file specifically is from freepix.com and you can download this for free. I'll link this in the description. And if you need a commercial license for your project, if you're working for a client, I suggest Envato Elements. There's tons of vector icons on there specifically and even graphicriver.net if you don't wanna have a membership. So let's go ahead and take this file here, for example. Once we have downloaded a file, we can see there's tons of you know vector objects in here, and if we click around, basically everything is gonna be selected, and you know we wanna be able to just take individual objects and bring them into After Effects. So, so usually what I do here is I grab the selection tool here at the top, and I select an area that I wanna be able to bring into After Effects. You can see everything is selected. So when you have your selection, what you need to do is go to Object and click on Ungroup. And you might need to click this a few times, so it's good to remember the shortcut. And then once everything's ungrouped, maybe we can delete the background and drag select, you know, this tablet here. We'll copy it and we'll go to File, New, and we'll create a new document here. doesn't matter the size. Click on Create, and we'll just paste this, you know, in here. And we can move it over here for now, and we can scale it up by bringing up that corner piece. So now we have one icon in here, and we can go and grab a few more. And I'll come in here and select a few more of these icons and I'll copy them and paste them into the same file and make it just a little bit bigger so we can see what we're working with here. So when you have your vector graphics ready to go in one file, all you need to do is go to file and click on save and save it as your file, as an illustrator file and go ahead and save that. Then we can move over to After Effects and we'll want to import our file, bring it into the project window. And it'll ask us, what do you want to import it as footage or a composition? I choose composition, click OK. And we can double click this composition and boom, there's our icons. And a cool thing about this Illustrator to After Effects workflow, we can go into Illustrator and we can select the color of something and change it here in Illustrator, save it, move back over to After Effects and it automatically updates. So it's good to keep both of these project files open so we can have that automatic update. So here we have our main composition and perhaps we have voiceover or we're just using titles. You know, there's a lot of different scenarios for explainer videos, but we want to be able to bring our vectors into our main composition so we can, you know, showcase what we're trying to say in our you know, videos. We'll go into our composition that we imported over here and we have all of our icons and you see they are in four different layers. So there's multiple ways you can import this into your main composition. What I like to do is just grab all of our layers and just copy them and go to our main comp and just paste them in there. To me, this is a really quick way to do it. So typically the first thing I do when doing explainer videos with vector objects, I typically go right for the placement. So I go ahead and move our you know, vectors around and put them in place where I need them to be. You do any rotation or just positioning so I know where things are going to be and do any scale properties if I have to. And here's the beautiful thing about vector objects if you never worked with it. So if I scale up this phone, you can see it's pixelated. However, if I click on this vector icon right here, right in the middle, boom, you have complete scalability without worrying about pixels. So that's what's cool about, you know, working with vectors. <clears throat> so now we just need to animate our icons here. So there's a ton of ways to animate it. There's a ton of transform animations we'll take a look at real quick. So, you know, with our layer selected here, we can maybe add a keyframe for scale and rotation and move both these keyframes forward in time because we want to be able to know that, hey, this is where it's going to end up. We can set the scale down to 0% and we can even change the rotation by a little bit. So kind of rotate in there. And if you want, we can overshoot it by just a touch and then have it go back down. And then we'll go ahead and make our last keyframes easy ease and our first keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. 
So now we have a very simple animation with our laptop here and we can go around animating these however we want to bring it on. Of course if you have voiceover you will want to probably bring these on when it's queued up for voiceover. And if you want to animate like say individual you know aspects of the vector icon so perhaps some of this you know UI in this laptop you can animate this separately. So what we do here if you want more control uh, is you'll have to right click the layer here and go to uh, create and click on create shapes from vector layer. And this is going to allow us to easily select each group by itself. So if you want to animate these on separately, and if I select on one of these groups, you can see that I can separate that element from the vector. So it's really up to you how much animation you want to put into this type of work. It's, you know, of course, depending on the client and how much time you have and obviously uh, what you're getting paid for the project. So that's really up to you. Um, but in this video, we're just going through a few concepts here. So, so when I do this type of explainer video work, and there's just so many vectors, and you know these videos can be you know minutes long, and obviously you can be working with hundreds of layers, and it's just a ton of animation. I'm always looking to save time because it's just going to take hours to days to do this sort of thing, especially if you're working by yourself. So one tool that helps me save a tremendous amount of time when I'm doing this type of animation is called Animation Composer. I'm sure you've heard of it, especially if you watched some of other videos in the past. What Animation Composer allows us to do is we can simply select all of our layers here and they have no animation to them at the moment. We can go into our transition presets, go into our 2D layer, trans layer transformations and these are all animation preset folders. So for example, I can come here to rotate and scale. I can preview an animation and find something that I like. I like this overshoot rotate and scale 3 and all I do is drag this preset and apply it as in. And now every layer is animated. However, we want to be able to customize this a little bit further so not every animation is the same. Of course, you can drag in separate animations, but just for the sake of this, go to more tools and you go to transition shifter. What we do here is set the number of frames to say five and click on do. And now this animation has been offsetted and that looks awesome. <clears throat> and more importantly, you can control the animation by dragging the markers out. So this will extend the animation and you just have a little bit more hand control with this. And if you want to be able to animate all this out, because typically that's what happens in you know explainer videos, we can find like another animation and just apply us out. And now we have our markers in the end here, and then we go back to transition shifter, go to out transitions, and stagger it by you know five frames, and we just click on do again, and bam. And now we have our animation in, and it's going to animate out whenever it needs to animate out, and boom, we have. A whole bunch of animation presets in here. We, there's over a thousand motion presets. So I know this video was pretty quick and not as in depth as many of our other tutorials. However, you know, this the purpose of the video was to show you how to create explainer videos that need vector animation on how to you know work them in Illustrator and bring them over to After Effects so you can be able to do whatever you want. The main thing about explainer videos is really the timing. So you want to be able to time up your graphics to make sense with the voiceover or with the titles that you need to put in place there. Um, and overall just explain the information that you need to get across and to execute the purpose of the video you're creating. And if you want to learn more about the extra graphics that you see here with the glitches and even the accent graphics, I'll link some tutorials in the description where you can learn how to create these you know, extra graphics so you can take your explainer videos to the next level. Of course, these are all separate topics and stuff like that, so that's why I'm not combining it in this tutorial. So, so be sure to check our links in the video description. Hope you found this video helpful, and if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media network, so those links are in the video description, and always be creative.